and good morning everybody. Welcome to great day at this great day time of 743 this morning. Now it's time to head over to see Lou because he has a very prickly friend he wants to introduce us to. Today. Yeah, this is very cool. Uh, Rondi Armin is here from the Academy of Wildlife Education over at Merle Hay Mall and this is where we show you folks wild animals right here in the studio and I do have to say I've seen this creature, these type of creatures before, but this might be, Ron, the best name I've ever heard <laughs> for this particular animal. Now, what exactly is this animal, uh, the correct terminology? Okay, this is a North American porcupine. North American. And uh, again, they are considered an extirpated species here in Iowa. Uh, we used to have porcupine in the state. However, I have heard from some coyote hunters that use dogs, that their dogs came back with quills in their noses, and the only animal that could do that would be a porcupine. So we might have that occasional straggler back into the state from Wisconsin. Now tell everybody what the name of this animal is. Okay. This is awesome. We always think outside of the box when it comes to naming our wildlife <laughs> ambassadors. So this one, her name is Barb. Barb, that the is porcupine. perfect. Yes, absolutely. That is absolutely <laughs> perfect. Yeah. We're gonna get, we're gonna wrangle Barb over here. A very curious animal. Hey, yeah, she will check stuff out. Uh, porcupines, uh, they know they're a porcupine. They know they've got probably one of the best uh, defense mechanisms in nature as far as those quills go. Uh, you know, the question always is how far can a porcupine shoot its quills? That's what I was going to ask you. So, you know, if Jackie wants to raise her hand, we'll see if we can get at that. Jackie, oh, hold yeah. your hand, no you know, problem. That's right, you know. Uh, it's amazing. I did that at the Iowa State Fair one time and said, hey, let me, you know, talk to porcupine real quick. We'll see how far we can project them. They can't. So, that's again, the it. only way that they're going to uh, put quills in you or a dog or whatever is if they slap you with their tail. Now, how is that possible? Because her name is is barb and is that what, what, the, what the quill is shaped like? Well again the, the quill itself is modified hair it's hollow and then it's got a spiral barb on it and so what happens is, is they'll give you some warnings they'll clack their teeth they'll thump their tail and if you don't listen to the warning then they'll slap you with that tail and they've got up to about 10,000 quills on oh, their wow. body okay. and so you'll get some of those uh, in whatever part they hit and uh, since they're spiraled they can work their way deeper into the flesh. As you try to move around? Right if you don't attend to it and get it pulled out and stuff it'll work its way deeper into the flesh. Now in case happen. somebody does have an encounter their dog has an encounter with a porcupine what do you think the first line of action should be? Well again bad dog is the first thing to do. Mm. Don't go messing with the porcupine. Uh, they come out, you just spin it backwards and they'll come out. Does uh, it have they, an arrow on it so you know which way it spins uh, in? Kind of. Okay. I mean, clockwise, counterclockwise, you can figure that out. Okay. Uh, you're going to still See, pull I never a, knew that. You're still going to pull a chunk of meat out no matter which direction. Oh, really? Well, yeah, it's, it's not going to feel good. Uh, you know, we have our staff has worked with our porcupines and you know, every once in a while we get stuck and it's interesting to watch the reaction of our staff when you got to pull a quill out of your leg. So it's <laughs> like a needle then? It stuck is, in it here. is. Okay. Uh, it's got natural antiseptics on the en end of it, so it's not like you're going to get an infection really? and stuff. So, I mean, they're, if you're going to get stuck by something in the this wild, would this would not be a bad animal. So how long do these animals live on average? Uh, well, again, they're the second largest rodent in North America. Rodents uh, tend to not live very long. Uh, so you're talking probably five years. I see, yeah. I didn't realize a porcupine was a rodent. Yeah, and again, the only other rodent that's larger than a porcupine porcupine is the beaver. Okay. Uh, so uh, these guys here, uh, they've been around for a long time. Uh, they used to live in Iowa at the time of settlement. Again, loss of habitat pushed them out of the state. So our closest porcupine dense populations, Wisconsin, Minnesota, so you're going to find okay. uh, quite a few of them. And we've been up there and seen them wandering along the side of the roads or just kind of sojourn along there. But just leave them alone and they're going to leave you alone. Leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. Uh, they do, uh, as far as when we work with them as wildlife ambassadors, they imprint very well to working with people. I've seen porcupines to where they'll jump up in people's laps and oh, stuff really? like that. I mean, they're really good ambassador animals. There are certain places where you can touch a porcupine and not get stuck by a quill. Okay. So it's right across their nose and on their feet. Okay. So yeah, someone said, oh, scratch it behind the ears. They yeah, love it when you do uh, that. So. No doubt. Uh, and then, uh, again, Barb here really conceals her quills quite now, well. Now, does, does Barb talk at all? Because, you know, th there was a video that was going around a couple uh -huh. of years ago that we, you know, uh, you know back in the day, uh, we posted it on our website and it received millions of hits about this um, porcupine that was eating a piece of corn. And if, you, if you don't know what we're talking about, go to right. YouTube and just just YouTube uh, porcupine eating corn. And you can hear 
the porcupine talking, so to speak. Right, they do have a, a unique language, uh, and it kind of sounds like baby talk sometimes. Yeah. Uh, Does Barb talk like that too? Yeah, absolutely. They do talk, uh, especially when the boy and the girl they're feeling a little, you know, a little, frisky. a little frisky and stuff. It's pretty wild to watch. The male spins around and tries to urinate on her. Okay, so just to get her That's in the a heck of a courtship. There, absolutely, huh? and again, it's entertaining for kids and adults. <laughs> so now come on down to the academy. Speaking of it. entertaining for kids and adults, how did last week go? Uh, with Thanksgiving holiday. Again, it's always fun to have the people out. Uh, the numbers continue to increase. It's uh, Again, it's a destination location here in uh, central Iowa. It really is a neat you. place. And just real uh, briefly, touch on some of the animals beside Barb. You can go out and see Barb. Beside Barb, what else can people see out there? Uh, the black bears are a huge attraction. Everybody likes to watch the black bears. They're very interactive. They come up to the glass. And actually, the cougar, the wolves, they, they'll ch actually chase people back and forth. They just like to interact. And that's why... Our animals being wildlife ambassadors, mm -hmm. that's one of the things that we wanted them to do was interact with us safely and with the general public and uh, everybody gets to see it and that's the important thing. Yeah, and of course people are shopping now for gifts. They do have a gift shop out there sure. and some really cool items too. Yeah, we've got uh, you know t-shirts and posters and all that fun stuff too. And stuff the good you're not going to find anywhere else. Well, no, and again, yeah. it's all wildlife related and it all benefits a nonprofit wildlife conservation organization. So you're not only buying a gift, you're also helping the environment by supporting what we do. There you go. Well, Barb, you did a good job. You didn't stick anybody. That was the goal here today. So, again, if you want to see Barb or any of the other animals, Merle Hay Mall is where you need to go, right down the road, right down the uh, the aisle from, from Target, Super That's Target. It. Coming out to the Academy of Wildlife Education, we're open during regular mall hours. And, uh, again, you'll have a, a wildlife uh, encounter like you've never had before. Wonderful. Thank you, sir.